Hello and welcome to Dungeons and Drama Nerds, a podcast exploring the intersection of theater and tabletop role-playing games. This episode is the beginning of our Apocalypse World campaign, Irremediably Home, and features collaborative world-building and character creation. We're picking up with our players partway through their session zero, after they've discussed the safety tools they'll be using and some of the table rules for the game. Let's dive in. Yeah, uh, I am Percy. My pronouns are he, him, or they, them. Uh, I'm Dex. Uh, my pronouns are also he, him. Uh, well, my name is John John, and my pronouns are he, him. Hi, my name is Ella, and my pronouns are they, them. Hi, y'all. I'm T. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, or they, them. Uh, so the fadeaway is um, built on the former grounds of Washington, D.C., which was once considered the most one of the most powerful cities in the world. Uh, in the fadeaway, there are nine major settlements, and the Around them is the wastelands that are known affectionately as the Elysian Fields. Um, to give you some info about time, uh, about 50 years ago, the world changed forever in a cataclysm, but no one can remember why. Uh, there are now ferocious, mindless monstrosities wandering the Elysian Fields through, outside the safe zone of the city. Uh, occasionally, messengers will break through to the fadeaway from Twice Nice or River City or Murderland, but few make it through the Elysian Fields. The uh, fadeaway territory is the area inside the beltway, and that's so if you ever need a reference, just pull up a map and whatever is inside 495, that is your territory. It is held up by something known as Drunkrian's Wall, um, because I needed some weird history reference there. Um, those will be keeping... It's a wall made out of trash and fortified junk, and it is what keeps the larger monstrosities and demons at bay. Uh, the Fadeaway has nine major holds, with several smaller villages dotted throughout. Uh, those often will pay tribute to the closest faction in order to for you know protection or supplies or whatever. Uh, within the walls, though, there are several... Gangs that have resorted to violence, thanks to the general lawlessness of the region. Uh, there are raider settlements that dot the land, um, but they rarely tussle with the bigger factions just because they uh, get outgunned. At the same time, the larger factions don't really have the resources to commit to wiping them out from the fadeaway, so that is just something that people in our world will live with. There is always the threat of raiders coming to take your stuff. And several people actually you know, who get discontented with their life in the faction will actually leave to join the raiders. Uh, there are more and bigger raider settlements outside of the fadeaway in the Elysian Fields, although life out there is much, much, much more dangerous. So people have traded some level of freedom for the protection within the fadeaway, but not everyone is satisfied with that. So I have built you all several factions. Um, this is just to set up the general politic of the fadeaway uh, and you are welcome to include any of these people or factions in your backstories as you think of them uh, so you have an area called mercy mercy is based out of nat stadium run by a hocus named Lu Yulia davignon mercy is sort of the uh it's I basically I love to, what I love to do when I build worlds is sort of like take the classes and build things around them. So Mercy is led by a hocus, and so you have this church uh, to this this prophetess basically, and she uh, speaks to some higher power, and her acolytes are known as harbingers, and they they work as her, like her managers and her supervisors and teachers and the leaders of that that settlement. They also function as a psychic antenna for her, which allow her to tap into the maelstrom, which is a hocus move. So, Ella, if you are looking at hocus hokai, this this could be an interesting thing for you. Uh, let's see. Okay. At the highest point of Nat Stadium, there is a small building called the Chateau de Serfin, um, where Yulia resides. The next area we have is a place called Demon Town, which is sort of like the mercenary town. Uh, this is housed up at the old convention center uh, around 9th Street, right around there. Uh, not too far from the gallery place Chinatown Metro. Uh, it's a, it, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's like a big building, like almost two big buildings connected by a small walkway. Um, and that's where a lot of conventions are held. So that place is spacious, and in our world, in the fadeaway, it has been built into something of a fortress, uh, repurposed as a fortress where lots of mercenaries uh, tend to live. So a lot of hired guns, you, you'd find a lot of battle babes and gun luggers running around there. And they often provide a lot of the manpower for the fadeaway as well. They are sort of the fighting force, question mark? Um, 
Oh, and, and to state before, as I lay out these places, if y'all have, like, lore or apocalyptica or things you want to add to these, feel free. Like, build it into your backstory. And because, again, with the, the hyper-collaboration I love, if you're like, oh, man, my character came from Demon Town and it had this kind of culture, I'm like, great. Give it to me, and I will include it. You know, so these are these. Uh, each of these holds are just skeletons for you that to flush out if you want them. Uh, the next area is the Heights, run by someone named Ridley. Ridley is an angel, and the Heights uh, are the former Columbia Heights with a supply line to the MedStar facility, not too far from there. And so the Heights is sort of like your healing zone, as it were. It's where you'd find a high concentration of angels, uh, former nurses, and people who've been trained in the medical profession. And they're also the biggest supplier of medical supplies, having had access to a major hospital settlement, a pre-war hospital thing from the world before. So they are decidedly the healthiest people in the fade away. And so uh, they have worked out deals with several of the other holds to for protection in order to supply their medical supplies across the fade away. Uh, we have the Warren, which is run by Panna Running Wolf, who is a two-spirit hard holder. Uh, they are the biggest uh, hold, I think, in the fadeaway area. And they're the ones who have taken over the Southwest Waterfront and Arena. So Arena serves as their sort of castle, as it were. Because uh, if you all have even pull up pictures of Arena Stage online, they have these gigantic glass windows that are like so extra <laughs> um, with all love to my friends at arena <laughs> but like that building is is unnecessarily gorgeous <laughs> and also not very defensible it's all glass <laughs> <laughs> it's and in the apocalypse i imagine no longer just mostly glass but it is serving as sort of a bastion for this this area and what and because I am so disliking of gentrification, uh, Pana has taken over that area and actually removed most of the buildings and has made it into very fertile farmlands with access to water. And so that hold is actually completely degentrified, de and uh, they are one of the biggest providers of food for the fadeaway. Uh, with a sort of, they've turned that area into farmland and fishing grounds and the like. So we get a lot uh, because Pana is from the Piscataway Conoy. And if you've ever heard a show in DC where they give a land acknowledgement, the Piscataway tribes are what DC is built upon. And so I thought we would honor them a little bit here in our game uh, by having them have reclaimed the land. <laughs> the next area is the Junkway. Which is the Beltway. Um, that it is the Beltway is that next area. Uh, a, a man named General Yang, who came up through de as a Demon Town mercenary, was sort of unanimously decided by being like the most badass person ever as a chopper to be the person that mans the defense of the entire fadeaway. And uh, it's it, it's held up by Junkrian's Wall again, which keeps out bigger demons and uh, monstrosities and the like. And Yang's folks are the only ones who control the secret to gasoline manufacture. So they are the ones who like actually are the suppliers and producers of gasoline for any vehicle. So if you're a driver, you might have a, a fun relationship with the people over at Junkrian's Wall because they're where you're going to get your best supply of gasoline. They also run a pretty rigorous customs program for people coming in and out of the wall, mostly screening people for diseases and contraband and not much else. So, which is it's like, if you don't have any of those, you're welcome to come in. What they do with diseases, I haven't decided yet. Maybe they send them over to the Heights, but like, I'm trying to, again, that's why I ask about the tone of the world. It's like, ooh, are they awful? I'm like, you're a disease, shoot to kill on sight, or do they actually take care of people? And I think with what we've discussed, I think they would send people for treatment in the Heights rather than allow them to quickly go spread the disease anywhere else. Yeah, I'm actually curious about how each of these hold leaders like interact with each other. So, so far it seems they they've they seem pretty amicable. They're like doing things like one is like uh, the food head, one is like the protection head. So I'm curious if they're using those as bargaining chips in the sense that like I'll do this for you if you do this for me, and like that's their relationship, or if they're actually like more cooperative than that. So that's something I've been playing around with in my head. I think later I wrote that um, several of them are actually really new. There's been a lot of turnover in the past year or two. So they are all interested in maintaining this tenuous peace that they have. You know, I, I think in the lore in my head is that these were all originally warring holds who all fought one another over each other's resources until they decided, hey, we can kind of work together here. 
And so I've written down that I think Pana and the Maestro D leader, uh, Dakota, are uh, sort of the, the holdovers, and Yulia are the holdovers from the last generation of of hold leaders, and the the rest are very new at their jobs within the past year or two. So I think that's where a lot of the sort of political intrigue comes in is what happened to all those other leaders and uh what how are these new folks stepping into these shoes um and that's that's something i might be interested in exploring if we're interested as a group if not no worries they that's the thing they right now i like to build the structure so we just have things to play with and i want to see what resonates with y'all when y'all build backstories and that's what i'll focus on next area is the high town market which is the eastern market area there'll be a hold there and that's sort of like your black market and night market and all markets rolled into one it's your your capitalism area um it's run by a woman named jacqueline fan and uh the, the motto of high town market is tan stoffel which is taken from one of my favorite novels by a problematic author um the moon is a harsh mistress by robert heinlein uh tan stoffel stands for there ain't no such thing as a free lunch uh, so this is like the the barter capital. This is where uh, tit for tat reigns supreme. Uh, this is if you are looking for things, this is where you go to find them. You know, people with skills. So, so skilled tradespeople, merchants. It's sort of your your market area of the city. It's Eastern Market. <laughs> Um, the next area is Circuit City, which is uh, down by the old K Street Foggy Bottom area, run by a gentleman named Rashid Al Mamin. This is where the savvy heads tend to gather, where they sort of jerry rig whatever they can and try to reclaim lost tech and try to like. It's thanks to Circuit City that you know the place has any working form of electricity at all, and uh, to a certain extent, some level of running water. Like so, these are our savvy heads, our engineers, our plumbers, our are like crafty people who make things run and so there will be a whole area of that as we need it uh there's a place called the black cathedral which was the former national cathedral which is a very beautiful building um but it is now warped in all sorts of strange and sort of eerie ways this is where the brainers tend to congregate uh because as we know from apocalypse world lore brainers are people who can open their minds to the, the psychic maelstrom of the world and have really tapped into it and so the the maelstrom the psychic maelstrom of the world that sort of usually exists at the fringes of everyone's internal like sixth sense is very present here it is very hard to even get near the black cathedral without getting a migraine like a ferocious migraine because it just hurts your head to get close but the brainers tend to congregate here doing goodness knows what. And for Percy, I have created a brainer for your hold as well. So you will have one of those people in case you need them for some reason. <laughs> but we can always work out what your relationship with them is. This is strictly uh, financial. What's the deal? And then lastly, we have an area called Speakeasy, which is... Uh, I was on the metro when I dreamt this one up, <laughs> going past a going into Noma station on the red line there's a sort of warehouse there near Noma where there's all the abandoned and leftover uh, metro cars and so I think the people of Speakeasy have turned those metro cars into their homes and restaurants and cafes and Speakeasy is sort of the new cultural center of the fadeaway so if you're looking for entertainment be it uh restaurants bars you know for that wonderful wasteland cuisine um and any form of entertainment and even you know uh my dig at the world a legitimate sex trade a legitimate like sex working economy there where the workers are taken care of and tested and have benefits and are paid well and are not stigmatized uh so in this world there is a booming sex work industry and the people are valued much like companions from firefly um, but you'll you'll find like the best chefs in the wastelands, um, uh, bartenders, like people who have managed to scrap together miracles out of very little. And so this is a so what is what is the saying? Uh, if you need physical healing, go to the heights. If you want to heal your soul, go to Speakeasy. And in Speakeasy, no violence is permitted without consent. Anyone who does a violent act without the other person's consent is given a lifelong ban, which is something that makes even raiders not want to attack there because they lose access to sort of the cultural heart of the fadeaway as a result. And so that's something for the par characters to keep in mind. Like if you, if you do violent things in speakeasy, you will lose speakeasy. And uh, as I'm continuing to build the world, I'll think of other ways that, you know, you make these factions happy 
or piss them off, you know? So I would love to, I'll keep a sort of invisible tally on the backside of like how well you're doing by the factions based on what they hear of you. And so, you know, you might walk up to Dakota Suarez of the speakeasy and he might not like you so much based on what, what, or sorry, what they might not like you too much based on what they've heard from you, or heard about you or vice versa. Um, and as you see from the, uh, document there, I've given them names, pronouns, and sexualities just so you are fully aware of, I guess, sort of their base statistics. So that's, that's the sort of like quick and dirty rundown of the world as I'm continuing to build it out. And, uh, like I said before, I try not to build too, too much because I like to see what people latch onto and then let them sort of include what they need or want to in that area. So if you're like, Ooh, you know what? I'm, I'm a savvy head, but maybe I grew up in speakeasy, you know, and I rejected the call to be an artist to go work with gear. <laughs> so, um, you know, any, any number of things though, this world is built to be your oyster. I would always love to collaborate with you on fleshing out each of these factions and holds. And so with that sort of rundown in mind, I think I would like to get into character creation. Everyone excited? Yeah. 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 Great. So I this is going to be for y'all now. Um, I think I know Percy and I have spoken a little bit about his ideas for uh, the heart holder. So thing at the very least things I would like to get are name, look, um, what are the other things? All the things that go into history, you know, so we will go around and talk about names looks and a little bit of backstory if you've come up with it you don't have to have so like don't feel the need to create something out of nothing just give me impressions ideas things you want out of the character and storylines you would be interested in pursuing and uh this topic is not very structured it's it, this is playtime y'all so i'm going to essentially cede the floor to you as we uh, begin creating the characters and feel free to like you know jump in build upon each other i am such a big fan of yes anding so uh have fun. Who would like to go first? I think I'd like to nominate Percy to go first, since we're all going to be living in his compound. I'm a I'm a big nerd, and this is my map of my uh, compound. <laughs> um, it's fine. That's amazing. Um, if you are familiar with DC, I have chosen um, Dupont Circle, and specifically the old streetcar station in that is now Dupont Underground as. Um, as my hold. Essentially, uh, I think my character's name is Vance Holiday. Uh, they are like tall, suave, like always wearing a suit, very attached to ideas of like what is upper crust and what is, um, you know, fancy. Um, and I think the idea, because I was sort of trying to justify why I have a hold that is not one of these major ones. And I think they are trying to do some kind of like not a social experiment per se, but I think clearly like the old way that we ran things and old hierarchies and old uh, priorities did not work out and something went very terribly wrong. So now let's look at living, living our lives in pursuit of the things that bring us joy and it like it like an epicurean kind of like pleasure is what's most important and we should only do the things that are pleasurable to us um sort of thing and i think they're trying to create a community that is all people who buy into this and sort of a self-contained community and i think there will be tension with like i have to depend on other holds for certain resources and how do i navigate that is kind of where where i'm coming from yeah that's sort of what i what i have um how old is vance uh i think they are probably older i think probably 40s i think they waited a while to f like i think the hold is not very old like i i think this is a this is very much a, a person who like waits and watches and is is interested in in like assessing what everybody else is doing and then hopping in later on with like, this is, this is the best course of action that I've sat on for a long time. Um, so I think this is an older person who remembers the early days of post cataclysm and is now has now in the last maybe like five years said, okay, this is what I want to do. Um, I'm claiming this spot. Okay. I think I'd like to tack on to that a little bit. 
Um, so my character's name is Sydney, uh, Sydney Thorpe. Uh, he's probably mid thirties, um, like mid, early mid thirties, um, and he's a savvy head, um, and he has been with Vance's hold since Vance started their hold. He was previously living in Circuit City uh, under Rashad, but there was just like so many savvy heads there. It was particularly difficult to stand out. And when there are so many good ideas around you, it's like hard to come up with your own unique things, your unique ideas. So he heard that the hold Vance established also salvaged uh, a very old bygone relic, uh, the single Okam tree, uh, Okam cherry tree that DC had. So he's very excited about plants. He's almost always wearing like a, a very casual clothing. He's like the opposite of Vance in every way. He's very meek, plain, uh, a little stubby in every way. <laughs> uh, and he's wearing like a green, planty papa t-shirt which is just like a tree on it uh he's got like gray sweatpants with some stains that you hope are dirt and they are uh, uh and he he operates a a growing environment uh in vance's hold so he is growing most of their food um but he also is a techie so uh Often people will come in and say, this would have been a really nice garden if you didn't have all this weird ass electronica in here. And others would come in and say, wow, this would make a really nice radio shack if you didn't have plants growing inside your computers. So that's his kind of personality. Can I um, tack something onto that? Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. offer you. I think Vance is kind of a Luddite. And I think they're really drawn to like a person who is does not make them feel dumb for not getting technology. Like I think they're particularly draw like they like Sydney a lot because like this is a person who is not super tech forward, but also can help them understand how computer. Exactly. And Sid Sydney's uh, also I'm drawing a lot of inspiration from my current daily life of working from home and then playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> so that's like all I've been doing for the past several weeks. And so Sydney's very much a shut-in. Um, he hates going outdoors more than anything, but he loves plants. So he's very happy when someone like brings him a new plant. But he's moved one time in his entire life, and it was the move from Circuit City to Vance's Stronghold. And you will so rarely see him outside of his growing environment slash bedroom. I'm pretty much the polar opposite of that. Uh, I am... Uh, playing Vector. Uh, Vector uses the uh, Z, Zier pronouns. So uh, Z is uh, the... I'm, I decided I'm going to go with uh, the Maestro D. I, I kind of basically was just listening to John John talk and reading along with the document. I had a really kind of interesting idea that I'm not sure if we'd like or not. I also was really into the ideas of uh, like train cars as cafes, train cars as like uh, businesses. Um, but I was thinking that... Uh, I had a train car as a business and then my business got kicked out of the speakeasy for non-consensual violence. And now we have somehow harnessed a uh, demon attached to the front of it to pull us like on the train tracks around the city. So we are like a moving. What? Yeah, I really, it was, so this cool. came up with, I had nothing before <laughs> we started talking about uh, the world. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, uh, based out of, um, Vance's uh, hold, but also like very much finger in every pot. Like, I think I was looking at like the you pick one primary uh, attraction with two side attractions for your establishment. I think the primary one is this is like a gladiatorial like this is like a fight club in this train car. Uh, very like survival of the fittest. Um uh, but also, I, I don't know what the other two attractions are. I was thinking maybe sex. I was thinking maybe it's a brothel as well. But I'm not sure what that looks like yet. I haven't really gone any any more detail about that. Uh, and that's what I have. I think the idea of a fight club in a train car sounds like the most chaos and really, really fun. So that's what I've got so far. I think Vector's like a fresh, like, 19. Like, very much, like, got a, like... I think, like, stole this uh, car from someone who's a little bit older who, like, was like, oh, I'm going to, like, leave this business to you. And I was like, yeah, you're going to leave it to me now. And, yeah, Vector, Vector's a... Wow, uh, very precocious. Uh, 
Z is an energetic uh, child. And I think uh, way too eager, a little power hungry, dangerous, and very much similar to um, Vance in that, like, pleasure is everything that matters, but I think goes too far with it. I think that is the difference of, like, the social experiment where, like, Vance has probably found a way to find a nice balance where Vector is like, we're going to fight until someone dies. And then we're going to drink until someone dies. And there's a lot of like that level of uh, intensity. There could be like a really interesting master and like slash apprentice thing going on here, especially since uh, Van is uh, Vance is like significantly older than uh, Vector as well. I think that could be really interesting to play off of. Yeah, I'm really excited to like play with that dynamic with them to see what they're like. I think as a person, they're very anti violent Like they're not necessarily pacifistic, but like are, are uncomfortable with violence and scared of. But like, I think that's probably their biggest fear is is physical harm. So I think, yeah, I don't know how that's gonna gonna play out. And let's see. So, um, Vance, where were you before you started your hold? <sighs> I don't know. I guess I'll think out loud because I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess that's what this is for. I think um, this is a, a, a person who I think maybe the high town market area, because I think this is a this is a person who grew up understanding the world in a very transactional way and has sort of started to reject that. Um, Like, I think they are trying to shift viewpoint less from like what what is in this for me and more like what can I offer you if that makes sense like I think that might be that might be what it is cool cool so we have sort of origin in high town market Sydney we have you originating from circuit city I yeah I'd actually like to talk about that with um Vance a little bit Mm -hmm. um I think there could be an interesting thing where we have like Sydney being very like devoted to Vance in like an like an an older like you being the older sibling kind of thing. Um so is there a time when and we can alter where Sydney grew up as well, where uh Sydney would have met Vance at a very young, impressionable age, and then they might have kept in correspondence and Sydney again shut in, never leaves his home. So when you created the hold, Sydney was like there there was the tree that was there that he was very interested in, but also because you're there and you have your own hold now, he was like, I will make this one move ever for you. Yeah, I like the idea of them being really close friends or have or maybe not being really but having yeah had some kind of encounter that was really meaningful to both of them you said Sydney was in his 30s right mm-hmm. yes and it seems like movement between these main holds is pretty free like it seems like there's no like no one no one is stopping anybody from moving between them per se so it seems although I don't know that they would venture to Circuit City very often just because it's not really their gig what I'm trying to figure out is is what Vance did before running a hold. Um, although I feel like it's something like like being an accountant or something like that. Um, so maybe if something he, with trade or something. Go ahead. If they did some bookkeeping for like, I'm I'm because I feel like your Vance has become jaded, right? A little bit? Yeah. Okay, so maybe they did some bookkeeping for some immoral people or people who, like, disagreed, or uh, who they disagreed with. And that's, but they had to do it because of the circumstances they were in. And they were like, okay, I have to change these circumstances um, surrounding me. I guess a broader question I have just about, like, world in general is, like, like, this isn't, like, a traditional economy where, like, you have to have a job and make money, per se. But I wonder if they tried to sort of try to do that and were like, this doesn't work and this doesn't make sense. And and yeah, so I wonder if maybe there was some kind of like for bookkeeping or accounting work, they went to Circuit City and had some kind of encounter with with Sid and found like a person that they that they like respect and, and understand because it's a person who is it fair to say that Sydney doesn't quite fit in with other savvy heads? Oh, absolutely. Sydney's trying to create plant-based um, 
electrotech. So that's fair. <laughs> uh, what he's trying to do with the the old cherry tree is turn it into an electrical network that can uh, that reaches through the roots to spy on others. You know, provide various resources for the hold. Yeah, like I think Vance is really into the idea of like improvement through tech and improvement through like uh, pr- pursuing the the things that are bring joy to people like I I think they're really all about like let's do weird shit and see if it works because clearly what I've been doing like the normal thing that I've been doing isn't working so yeah I think I don't know what the nature of that encounter between them was but I love the idea of them having had some kind of meaningful encounter and them meaning a lot to each other I think that also says something important about the world and this is something I remember reading from like World War Z right where people very much clung to quote-unquote the old ways you know uh in world war z there's a whole chapter about how like ceos and managers are like why am i less important than my gardener now i think that's exactly kind of how vance feels and now they're trying to like recalibrate yeah and so i think you know there there must have been people who were like you know what this this world needs economy and we're like you know what economy needs accountants and so you probably were like trained to be an accountant and you're like what am i even doing like this makes no sense because there is oh this is a helpful information about the world that i forgot to share um i have been playing fallout 4 for the past like month now as sort of like research for this and seeing what (laughs) i can steal and one of the things i love from that is that bottle caps are the currency right because because they are ubiquitous um and i was like without stealing bottle caps directly i f- what's a good idea for currency for people who want to use it not necessarily everyone but i think the fadeaway is starting to use keys like a uh, because like house keys house keys because everything else got destroyed <laughs> and so like most of the keys don't go anywhere so i think um Keys that are not attached to keychains or anything are used as a sort of currency now. Um, or people are attempting to use that to try and get some sense of that. But otherwise, everything else is barter. I really love the idea like that some people are like using keys and like trying to like get into buildings that are locked, like hoping that they get like the right key, like kind of like like geocaching almost. Oh my goodness! <laughs> There's just that feels like such like a like weird like niche post-apocalyptic like thing that might be happening yeah you never know you might get a key to a car that was destroyed or you might get a key to someone's safe you know (laughs) like could be and so it's an added sort of bonus to it's almost like combining trading cards and dollars into a single currency um and so but i think it hasn't fully taken because i think the idea of trying to run a financial economy in the way in the po- apocalypse doesn't make sense to a lot of people but like i i suspect in the world when the cataclysm happened only about 50 years ago like people who were old enough to remember the world before are like oh no like money is what makes the world go around we need to have some form of money whereas everyone else is like oh no i'm gonna trade you a goat for these carrots <laughs> you know and like yeah right, like and i'll like- do this job for you and you can provide for me x thing that i'm looking for and i imagine that i'm going to speak into existence that vance's parents survived i mean i guess they had to have because they had him or they they had them after the apocalypse happened but like also yeah so this person's parents definitely like lived most of their lives before they were born pretty close to when it happened so i think yeah, it makes sense to like uh, for them to cling to that or to be a champion of like, let's try and do this thing that we had last time. Yeah. And, and that's something one of the things that they don't talk about in Apocalypse World that I'm really excited to explore because it's like and that's why I selected a relatively close cataclysm time as opposed to like 200 years from now where everyone is fully ingratiated. There's a part of me that is fascinated by people who cling to old structures and uh, so when you have, it'll be interesting to see someone like Vance, who was raised by a uh, world before parents, people who knew the world before, versus someone like Vector, uh, whose parents like are prob- might be post-cataclysm and therefore never knew the world before. And the, that <laughs> probably inspires the, well, let's latch a demon to Ziz. Zier. Zier. Um train car and pull the pull that around like that's such an innovative idea that probably no one before would have been like that's super cool uh ella do you have any character ideas uh right now it's so cool if you don't um but if anything has inspired you right now feel free to brainstorm all out that's what we're here for um i think i'm gonna go with the battle babe um 
Their name is AZ Honey, and um, they were brought up uh, on the junkway. Um, and so they were thrown into that world pretty quickly and just recently left. They're feeling pretty harrowed by everything they saw beyond the wall. And they're feeling a little bit more dedicated to keeping Fade Away as a bastion from everything beyond. Um, I wanted to talk with you about prosthetics. Um, about potentially starting the game with prostheses. I am 100% fine with that because I think prosthetics are awesome. Awesome. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be a full leg, like hip to foot um, prosthetic as a result of an encounter on the junkway uh, with some of the, the horrible life beyond, which was their big impetus to start looking for work uh, more within the city. So that, that opens up an interesting possibility of having met someone like Sydney earlier on. Or maybe even earlier in your travels, when you were looking around, you wound up in a Vector's car being like, well, maybe I could just be a gladiator briefly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, totally. I can totally see them being like a, a brawler for hire um, after that. That's fe <laughs> it's feeling very Legend of Korra. Like, I'm sick of this wacko shit. Let me just punch people. How old is uh, Aziani? I think like mid-20s. 20s. 20s. 526. Y'all, this is delightful. We have like four decades. We've got a good age demographic. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I'm kind of really into the idea. One of the things that uh, uh, Maestro D gets as like part of their like establishment is you can like choose like two different types of security. I kind of love the idea that I'm like, hey, you're a badass. Uh, come work for me and be like mm -hmm. my bouncer. Like, but also like we throw you into the ring sometimes when someone's being really arrogant and is like, just being a total asshole. I'm like, all right, go kill him. Like, I feel like that there's some relief. There's some fun levels oh, to that. Totally. And like, I feel like AZ would be totally down for that because they also feel very lawful. And like, I, I really like the idea of them be like working on your car in that way or working in a car in that way. And that, um, that is like very much a safe haven for them after leaving the junk way. And just being like, oh, yeah, it's like someone's drunk. I can take care of that. That's nothing. You get out. This is a safe place. This is a nice place. Be nice here. Fight nice. Fight nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love them so much. That is delightful. Um, would you say that maybe Sydney or someone Sydney knew uh, worked on the prosthetic? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, that would be really cool. Uh, so again, so Sydney probably would never have met um, AZ, or we can say that they probably never have met, but maybe a request came in and it was Sydney who worked on the prosthetic for, for AZ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this would be back in like before he moved over to uh, Vance's Hold. Like, so this can be like during Circuit City time. Yeah. Do we want to name Vance's Hold? Yeah, I have not landed on one, but I'm open to open to suggestions. I think something with a feeling of antiquity is right. I I am drawn to So, uh anyone here anime fans? <laughs> there there was a uh, one very obscure one called the Getbackers where there's uh, an area within modern like within fully encapsulated within modern society called the infinite fortress which was its own post-apocalyptic zone but within like tokyo where they sent delinquents and so a bunch of people there all develop superpowers and form gangs and one of the gangs like the, the a bunch of them are like we're the volts or we're the emperors or we're like they have these like badass names and there's one group where they're just called elegance <laughs> and like uh the person uses like koto strings to fight and he is like very very androgynous and everyone's like he's gay and he's like i neither confirm nor deny and then slices them to pieces <laughs> like that feels very on that feels yes yeah so some something along the lines of like this like with all the other holds be, having names like this is the twilight fortress and this is like the junk way it's like something like i think it might be temptation yes oh i have something to that sounds great first uh, I have something run by, run by AZ for the prosthetic and also for John John, um, if he'll allow this. Would you mind terribly if your prosthetic also had plants in it? Ooh, I would not mind. Okay, so on occasion, like, just vines will sprout out of your prosthetic to do cool things that you want it to do. 
Cool, absolutely. I was hoping like a little I am Groot popping out or a bow truffle. <laughs> hey, you never know. It could be that. <laughs> could they could they be like kind of thorny vines? Yeah, absolutely. Your request. I cast okay. vine whip with my knee. <laughs> yeah, and I'd love to at some point discuss with you what this this plant te- planto technology is. It's like because there's some sort of weird, cool symbiosis that maybe couldn't have occurred before the cataclysm. That's what I was thinking when I was uh, looking at uh, how the maelstrom worked because the the guidebook was actually extremely unclear, and I think that was on purpose because it was kind of leaving it up to us as like a group to figure out what the psychic maelstrom really did. So I wanted to explore like new possibilities that we don't really have today um so like thinking of energy in a different way than we do now of course yeah i i dig that and i think that's a really like uh i wrote in another in another document about um i think i called them what did i call them the corrupted uh humans who had been twisted by the maelstrom um they're not i put them there in the document they're not something i'm interested in exploring as a as a mechanic or as a story point but i was as i was just brainstorming i'm like ooh, maybe people got twisted by this too the demons appeared for no reason, you know, or no reason that we know of. They just kind of appeared. And to clarify, I, I don't view demons as inherently evil. I view them basically as any other animal would, or as you would any other animal almost. Like, they're these big sort of alien creatures that appeared and kind of keep to themselves. They, like, sort of wander around, eat things. If you attack it, they will attack you. If you if you are there and they're hungry, they might eat you, but otherwise they'll leave you alone, you know? It's- I think you're talking about Sydney, actually. <laughs> you just casually you're working too hard you casually grab someone's arm and bite it because you're not paying attention i'm sorry you were in the wrong place yeah um percy i think you were about to say something yeah it almost feels like i'm thinking of like the idea of like plant technology and these like demon creatures that are not recognizable animals that the way that like we us players would imagine them it almost feels like like, um like annihilation if you've seen that movie like that like the the biology of the world is changing and we don't know why sort of thing so suddenly it is totally possible that plants and electricity can work together but like why is that or that like plant roots and cells are now working the same way that like neurotransmitters or electrical transmitters to you. Like I am so here for bizarre science. Right. Uh, I like to imagine Sydney like spends the majority of his time like sitting in the cherry tree and his computer is like plugged in to the tree. I dig. I dig that a lot. So cool. Um, and so then the, to tangent a little bit, my next question is, Vector, what is the name of your establishment? Do you have one? I really love the like whole like signs worn off and like letters missing kind of vibe. Like, um, so I was thinking like Metro Car, the M and the E, and then the R wore off. So we've got Troca. And I was thinking Troca is the name of the establishment. Ooh, I love it. Troca. I know that no, like actual metro cars actually say metro car on them but like <laughs> in this hypothetical world whatever it's fine <laughs> the 9000 series trains say metro car on the side <laughs> oh sweet cool 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 i thought they just said metro but sweet 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 oh, i was, I was gonna it. say like what if vector's just been on a journey trying to find all the letters individually from different signs but z's just not been able to find the three letters that are missing so it's just like Troka, Troka, and then, uh, all right, I'm done with this. This project is over. All the stuff inside is made up, like, all, like, the signage inside for, like, prices and stuff are all made of, like, cut up, like, street signs and stuff. Like, it's very, like, found, uh, and, like, if I get a new uh, thing on the, um, menu or whatever, I have to, like, go hunt down the letters to put inside Troka (laughs) to make it work. Z communicates exclusively through cut up magazine letters. (laughs) Letters. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that must make your production time for every single menu or every reprint like takes so long and has so to be done long. by hand. Oh my god, it's awful. Do you have like your own arts and crafts team in the back to assemblies? <laughs> You've got fighting in one half and then just crafts in the other half. I would patronize that establishment. Like Right? Get in a fight, go to the crafts room. <laughs> Get a little, get some glitter on your new cast. <laughs> I think that process is like incredibly infuriating to AZ, for whom everything is like, no, there's a straightforward way to do this. No, stop. <laughs> Why do you have to find all the letters separately? You can just find the word. Just find the whole word. And like, 
Vector could not pay me enough to do that work on the side. I bet you there are several times where, like, the full word has been available and Vector just cuts it up anyways. AZ has definitely, like, gone out and, like, found the whole word as a gift and been like, I saved you some time, and then, like, watch Seer cut it up in front of them. Oh, no! Are you kidding me? Oh, AZ, I'm so sorry. Out of character, I'm so sorry. I don't think Vector's sorry at all, but out of character, I'm so sorry. It's what happens when you get the odd couple comedy of the the Order Muppet and the Chaos Muppet, I think, and I'm, I'm so excited for that. Oh, I was going to ask how long um, Vector and AZ Honey have been with Vance. I don't know that... I mean, you tell me, but I feel like Vector's car is not a permanent installation. Like, I think... Z probably comes and goes. Yeah, I very much think that um, this is Zier home base. Uh, I don't think that it's necessarily a part of uh, Temptation. But I also think, like, I've only been running this car on my own for, like, two or three years. Like, this is... Finding a home for this is one of the, like, subtle kinds of things that I'm trying to do. Is try to find, like, where is the right fit. I think this is the best one so far, but also I don't know that this is the best fit overall. Does Z have a set schedule for where the car goes, or is it just... Nah. Is it like the, you just kind of stumble across it, and you're like, yep. oh shit, it's it, let's go! Oh yeah, it is It is very, like, like legendary Pokemon like style. Like, if you happen to come across it, great. If not, sucks. But I also think there are people who, like, stay on there for... On Troka for weeks. Like, if you get on and you get into fights, like, there is food, there is place to sleep, like... It's not comfortable, but there is food, there is a place to sleep, and you can be there for a while. Yeah, I just sort of, I have in my head, like, the little side skit already of, like, you know, your person is like, okay, on my work to go raid this farm, huh? Ah, damn it, there's Troka. Oh, I don't have time, I gotta go raid this farm, oh no. (laughs) (laughs) Sort of like, oh, shit, I I saw Articuno on my way to work, fuck, you know? How 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 well known would you say Troka is? Like, if you go to like any of these other districts, like how many people in those districts would know about it? I think in certain districts, Troka is like an urban legend. Like people don't think it's real, and there are other people who are like, "No, I've been there. Like it's it's got to be real." But I think that it's, I would say, in like some of the seedier districts, it's pretty much confirmed, and in the like the classier places, it is very much like urban legendy. Like, if you went to the Black Cathedral, people would be like, that's not real. I kind of love the idea that I I would love for you for your homework to tell me like a couple truths and a couple lies. Like, what are some random rumors about Troka that people have made up, you know, and which ones does Vector allow to be propagated? (laughs) That's phenomenal. I'm gonna write that down as homework right now. I'm just imagining two people arguing about like the existence of Troka. And then because Vector doesn't have a set schedule, the guy's just like, no, it's here on like Thursdays at nine. Just come with me. And then they go Thursday at nine and Vector's clearly not there. So it propagates that rumor. Or conversely, you know, they're arguing about it as it's creaking by in the background. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I love um, the Fight Club (laughs) pop-up. I I dig it so much. Fight Club flash mob. Right? But it's also like pop-ups are such a a city thing. And if we're in a city environment, someone someone took the concept of pop-up and applied it to (laughs) a funny club. Oh, I'm so here for all your ideas so far. Um, So then right now, I think one of the big things I've noticed is we have almost two definitive groupings. And so I'm curious now to see how they all work together. And so we have sort of the tie between Ella and Dexter, and we have a tie between Percy and T. So I think... What what is it like when Temptation is currently hosting Troka, or when Troka is docked, for lack of a better term, at Temptation? What what does that sort of sound like right now, in your heads? I feel like when when Troka is stationed, I feel like Vance is kind of on edge because I think Troka represents like a big chaotic factor that they don't control, and I think they're all about like. I like to I like things to be around me that I have control over or the least that I can predict how they're going to to work. And I think I yeah, I think I think they get nervous and are kind of on edge when Troka is there because like who knows what's going to happen. But I wonder also if they 
have some kind of relationship with AZ as like some, because that they seem to me like, like a calmer force in that Troco world, like this kind of balancing factor. (laughs) Uh, I was thinking I would also be kind of uh, not on edge per se, um, but uh, as T mentioned before, Vector might be the like the uh, the antithesis of what Sydney's trying to be, right? So Sydney's like quiet, reserved, not here for a crazy chaotic time. So I think he'd have mixed feelings uh, because when a troka comes in, it draws in like these huge gatherings. There's like tons of fight clubs uh, or tons of people coming for the fight club. Uh, lots of noise, just like disorganization everywhere. Not that he's particularly organized, but he likes to be disorganized in his own way. Uh, but it is a, a, a way for him to see AZ Honey, who maybe like on her breaks from bouncing or bodyguarding comes by for like tweaks on their prosthetic yeah. Yeah, and I feel like AZ, it it tries to be like a a cooler, calmer influence, but I don't think that they can actually influence Vector. So a lot of their energy maybe gets poured into like trying to reassure uh, y'all two that like, no, no, we got this under control. Nothing's going to get past me. We're going to be okay, my sweet pigeons. What if like while I'm modifying your prosthetic... um... Uh, AZ's just like, oh, and I got them this entire signboard and they just cut it up. They just cut it up. Um, pivoting a little into my because on the sheet, um, for the hard holder playbook, um, you have to pick some things about your hold. And one of the ones that I chose was, um, a market commons, which adds the tag strangers. So I think that this all tracks with that as well. With like, this is not a super like I I think there are tons of people coming in and out that aren't people who live there or people who are part of the community and I think Vance has a complicated set of feelings about that Um, but it's sort of like you can't put that genie back in the bottle I think that um, at least part of the time whenever Troka is stationed in Temptation I think that uh, we shut down I think it's the only time we ever shut down. It's not consistent. It's not like the whole time I'm there. There's a lot of time where I'm there to like stir chaos and make money. But I also think that like Vector like really loves uh, all of Vance's stories. And I think like Vance has a connection to like the old world. And while Vector is very like anti old world is really fascinated by it. And so like, I think Vector has a lot of respect for Vance and really wants to, like, glean a lot of their knowledge and glean a lot of their, like, folklore. Because I think, now that I'm thinking about it, the whole, like, Troka is an urban legend, I think Vector is very much, like, a spectacle. Like, is all about, like, legends and folklore and stories and, like, wants to be as big a legend as some of these other stories that, like, Vance has told from their, like, past or, like, from their parents' past. Um, I think Vector probably sees Vance as almost a parent figure, but in the way where, like, Vector is like, I hate my parents and I hate everything revolving around parents, but, like, this is a parent figure, an adult figure that I, like, have some semblance of respect for. Yeah, and I think Vance feels similarly, like, this is somebody that Vance mentors, kind of, or views as, like, a mentee, and maybe in some way, like, they think that they can tame Vector, for lack of a better... Like, they think, oh, like, uh, he just needs to, you know, let it all out, and then and then it'll, it'll uh, you know, be calmer. And I don't know that that's the case, but I think that's what Vance hopes. Um, I think Z is aware of that, too, and is very much like, this is really cute that this whole person thinks that they can tame me. They can't, but it's it's precious that they think they can. Yeah, I think Vance is very much the kind of person who, like thinks they're a lot better with people than they are, thinks that they have a lot more influence than they than they really do, but also is kind of harmless enough that people are willing to humor them. Yeah, so see, this is so useful, because other than AZ, we don't have a very combat-oriented team. And so this this is very instructive as to what sort of things I can build for you all. I think it seems like you all might be interested, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I do a little more like... 
uh, less like go raid this place to go find this thing, but even maybe like um, like a heist could be fun. Uh, something like that where everyone has their sets of skills or gangs. Uh, things like I love running intrigue sessions where it's like, ooh, someone's gonna try and overthrow uh, Vance. Like, better root them out real quick before their insurrection starts. You know, stuff like that. You know, I think those could be interesting little taglines to play with. Um. Yeah, oh my god, I'm learning so much about your characters and I'm so excited. I'm already, like, making a document with little questions I want to ask everybody. Um, uh, really quick, uh, to, t- to tack on to your, your uh, comment about um, our team being uh, more intrigue-focused or less combat-oriented, I feel like I could, if... if uh, we wanted to be more combat focused because I think Vance does have potentially like a gang, and I, I do think... have a gang. <laughs> and I might be able to create some like plant based tech weaponry. So like that's also something we could do if you wanted to go out or however like we wanted to approach something like maybe that's like a way we solve a problem one time. Who knows? Combat is always an option, <laughs> um, but. Uh, just for me, so I'm like, okay, as I'm going to everyone's skill sheets and stories, it's like maybe combat isn't always the first thing I want to, like, throw y'all into. You know, it's not that, ooh, you four meet in a tavern and the orcs attack. Um, it's, or uh, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. You know, I think we can start off somewhere in a little different place than that. Dungeons and Drama Nerds is produced by Todd Brian Backus, Percy Hornack, and Nick Orvis, and is mixed and edited by Anthony Sertel Dean. Irremediably Home, our Apocalypse World campaign, features John John Johnson as the writer and master of ceremonies, Percy Hornack as Vance Holiday, T.P. Huth as Vector, Ella Mock as AZ Honey, and Dex Fan as Sidney Thorpe. Find us on Twitter and Instagram at DN Drama Nerds, and on Facebook at Dungeons and Drama Nerds. For cast bios, head to our website, DungeonsAndDramaNerds.com, and tune in next week for another episode of Dungeons and Drama Nerds.